What is up everybody, Shwayze here, and in today's video, I'm excited because we're gonna be comparing the Tesla Model Y Performance versus the Ford Mustang Mach-E GT. <music> Now before we dive into today's video, I do want to extend a huge thank you to EV Auto of Woods Cross, Utah for giving me the opportunity to review these two vehicles for y'all today. EV Auto specializes in hybrids and electric vehicles, so if you guys are in the market for a newer used EV, make sure you reach out to them and let them know that Swayze sent you. I'm going to include their information down in the description below. Okay, so why am I doing this comparison video between these two vehicles? Well. Chances are you're probably cross shopping these two if you guys are in the market for an electric compact crossover. And in a lot of ways, these two vehicles are very similar, almost nearly identical. And then in other ways, they're very different. And I figured it'd be interesting to highlight some of the similarities and differences in today's video. We're actually gonna discuss 10 different categories and then see how these two compare to each other. And then at the end of the video, I'm gonna give you my overall thoughts on which one of these two I would recommend. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, so in no particular order, let's start off with the styling. And first, let's start with the Mach-E GT. So starting off at the front end, the Mach-E GT does look different from all the other Mach-E's. And one way you can tell is the front end. First off, you have this kind of simulated grill on the GT trim level versus the other ones, it's kind of a body painted plastic. Of course, this isn't a real grill because electric vehicles don't need it, but it kind of gives you this look and feel of kind of this muscle car SUV. Now, the other thing to point out about the GT is you actually have this light up logo and take a look at the mane of the horse. It's actually a lightning bolt. So that's a little bit different than uh, all other Ford Mustangs out there, of course, because, well, this is the electric version. Now, you also get LED headlights on the Mach-E and they look pretty good. Uh, that daytime running light looks pretty aggressive, very similar to other Mustangs out there. And overall, I think the front end looks very muscular. I mean, you've got a lot of these big body lines, these big grooves on the hood. You've got this aggressive styled front splitter. It's a pretty attractive looking vehicle. Now coming across the side, the Mach-E GT has these 20 inch wheels. They're actually 245 wide tires and they're a continental cross contact. You also get Brembo's on the Mach-E GT trim level and coming across the side of the vehicle, you see there's this big body line that extends from the front to the back, definitely giving it a little bit more of a sportier stance, more aggressive in terms of styling. Now coming across the rear end, a couple changes compared to the standard Mach-E, the GT trim level, of course has this GT badge and then the roof is actually painted black on the GT trim level. So that's one way you can differentiate a regular Mach-E versus this GT trim. I do like the tail lights over here, LEDs. I do wish they put that windshield wiper up into the spoiler, but nonetheless, it's still a pretty good looking vehicle. Now taking a look at the Tesla, let's talk about exterior appearance and how this compares to the regular non-performance Model Y. From the front end, you really can't tell the difference. It looks identical to the other trim levels, but it's still a pretty attractive looking front end. You got LED headlights over here, little running lights down there, and then you kind of have this simulated front grille over here where it kind of molds into this body line that extends from passenger to driver's side. Coming across the side of the vehicle, this is where you can really tell that this is the performance trim level because you get different set of wheels and tires. So you've got these 21 inch Tesla calls Uber turbine wheels, which look pretty cool. So they're a little bit larger than those on the Mustang Mach-E over there. And they're wrapped around Michelin Pilot Sport tires. And so that's one way you can tell the difference between this versus a regular non-performance trim level. The other way you can tell is you got these red brake calipers that say Tesla on them. The other thing to mention is the Tesla Model Y Performance sits a little bit lower. It's kind of hard to tell obviously, but this does sit a little bit lower than your standard Model Y. And then coming across the rear end, very similar to all the other Model Ys out there. I'm sure you've seen a million of them, but the main difference here is the dual motor will have this red underline underneath to designate that this is the performance edition. And then you also have this carbon fiber spoiler. So those are just some of those small nuances or uh, differences, I should say, that you can tell between the regular Model Y versus the performance trim level. Now, in terms of styling, having them side by side, personally, I kind of like the look of the Mach-E GT. It looks a little bit more performancey, if that's a word, a little sportier than the Model Y. Uh, this just looks a little bit more pedestrian, kind of something you see every day on the road. Uh, and that's just because this is a very popular vehicle. A lot of people love this vehicle and this is just a little bit more unique, at least currently as of 2024, there's not as many on the road as there are the Model Ys. Now, the next thing I wanna address is the sizing and this is where they're very similar. So the Mustang Mach-E GT is 185.6 inches long and 63 and a half inches tall. Compare that to the Tesla Model Y, which is just slightly longer at 187 inches long and just slightly taller at 64 
four inches high. You know, having them side by side in terms of sizing, it almost seems like the Tesla Model Y is a little bit bigger. Uh, and I think part of that reason has to do with the sloping roof line on the Mach E GT. As you can see here, you know, the roof line is actually this top part of this black plastic over here, but they did kind of a tricky design style here where they made this section black and then the rest of it body painted. And so that makes it look like the roof is actually more of like a coupe style than it is a traditional crossover. So I think it's a little bit of design trickery that makes the Tesla Model Y look a little bit more rounded than the Mach E. It just seems like this one has a little bit more space. And we'll talk about the storage capacity here in just a minute. Okay, now let's jump inside of the Mach E and show you the interior styling. Okay, there's a few ways to get inside. First off, to unlock the vehicle, you can use your Ford key. This is standard across pretty much every single Ford out there. You can also use your phone to lock and unlock the vehicle and preheat it or turn it on. And then to get inside of the vehicle, you push this button and then it kind of kicks out a little bit. There's actually a small peg somewhere in here that kind of pushes the door out. And as you can see here, I can't push it back in. So it's kind of a pinch protector. But as soon as I pull it out, then that peg disappears and I can actually close the door. So kind of interesting engineering there. But as you can see, I'm pushing and it won't actually close. So jumping inside, let's talk about the interior here. The door panel reminds me a lot of some other Ford materials. For example, these buttons for the memory seats and the lock and unlock look very similar to other Ford products. Of course, the window switches as well. But there is some unique materials here. So first off, this is soft touch material, which I love. You guys know me. And then you have this copper piping over here. This metal trim piece looks really nice. A little bit of suede over here. Here. I do like the door handle. It's actually this little knob that you pull on to unlock the vehicle. And then taking a look at the door panel over here, this is all of course soft touch, a little bit more of that copper stitching. Down here is hard touch plastic, but that's to be expected. You got a little cup holder over here and a storage compartment. And then this thing comes with a standard 10 speaker Bang & Olufsen sound system. Now jumping inside, let's take a look at these seats. Really unique looking again with some of that copper stitching or copper piping and then that suede and then that leather. Lots of materials here and I gotta say I really love the way these seats look. I kind of wish they had GT written up here. That would had a little bit of a nice touch but there's really no complaints. This is a beautiful interior. And then jumping inside the vehicle, let's talk about the design styling in here. So uh, turning this vehicle on, you actually have to have a push to start button. And then taking a look at the steering wheel, I do like that it's leather wrapped. You got more copper stitching all across. On the left-hand side is how you'll control your cruise control settings. On the right-hand side is how you'll control your somewhat small but useful 10.2 inch horizontal screen. So this is an all digital display. And I do like the fact that it shows ground speed over there. So it's kind of like a, a fighter jet or fighter pilot type of styling to it. And then going behind this screen, you do have this large sound bar that extends all the way from the passenger to the driver's side, the BN no sound bar looks good. And then this is all hard touch plastic, but it's really not noticeable because you're not gonna be feeling this area much. I do like the fact that this has a little bit of a texture to it, and then a little bit more of that speaker grill over there in the back as well. Uh, to the left of the steering wheel, you've got some aluminum bezels over here, a little bit more of that copper. Of course, you got your air vent, and then some more suede over here as well as your typical Ford lighting controls. I will complain that although this is a tilt and telescoping steering wheel, it is not uh, powered. You have to manually adjust it, which is, uh, you know, for a car at this price point, I feel like it'd be a little bit better. Uh, this is kind of the big elephant in the room. That's a very massive 15 and a half inch screen and it works really well. It's got the latest uh, sync software. You've got your climate control settings always here at the bottom. And then this is kind of a cool touch. So they've started integrating in other Ford vehicles, but it's kind of this floating panel or this floating button. As you can see, it's actually attached to the screen, but it almost looks like it's just in the middle of nowhere. And then this actually has uh, several different purposes. So you can adjust your volume, you can adjust your climate controls. Uh, I do like how they've integrated some physical touches inside of the touchscreen. And it's a really big screen. I mean, it's pretty responsive overall. Uh, you hit the home button, you can open up various different settings. You do have wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto, which is really nice. You've also got heated seats and a heated steering wheel. There's no ventilated seat option inside of the Mach-E. Uh, moving down below this area, you do have two USB ports, a wire wireless charging pad, a little bit of a storage compartment, two cup holders, and then this is kind of your gear selector over here. It's this rotary knob. You got your parking sensors buttons over here. So you can push this button and it will navigate to a parking spot. The other cool thing to point out here is if you put it in reverse, you do have a bird's eye view, 360 degree camera. I do like how this whole section is leather wrapped. You got your uh, emergency parking brake over there. And then this is an aftermarket edition, but this is your armrest over here. Opening this up opens up a little compartment and 
this is a pretty decent amount of space. You do have a 12 volt cigarette style power outlet in there and then you can remove this section, it takes a second, and it has a little bit of a bigger compartment as well. So a pretty decent amount of storage space inside of the vehicle. And then up above you, you do have your sunglass holder, which is nice. You got your typical Ford switchers. This is pretty much straight out of my Ford Bronco home link system. And then this isn't a suede material. This is just your typical cloth, but take a look at that roof. Very large panoramic glass roof, which looks really nice. I wonder where they got this idea from. <laughs> we'll, we'll show that off in just a second, but let's hop into the second row and show you what's going on there. All right, so jumping inside of the back seat, same concept you push the button except there's no little handle over here because Ford found that most people just grab behind this door to open it but I do want to show off again there's pinch protection here so it doesn't accidentally close on you but jumping inside same soft touch materials over here on the door panel nice copper stitching over there again more of that suede uh, cool door handle as well same with your speaker grill a little bit of storage compartment down there and then taking a look at these seats these do have a cover on them for protection but as you can see same material that you have on the front row copper leather suede and then jumping inside this seat has moved back because when you uh, open the door when you turn the vehicle off it kind of has this easy entry and exit so this is tighter than me sitting behind myself but Ford says there's 38 inches of legroom in the second row you got two rear air vents back here and USB ports as well so a pretty nice place to sit now in terms of headroom I'm five foot nine and I've got a pretty good amount of space above me it does feel more like a coupe because of that sloping roof line as you can see the window pretty much ends right where my eyes are so it kind of feels more like you're in something sporty and nice and then I should point out you do have a center armrest with two cup holders as well okay now let's jump inside the Tesla there's a lot of ways to get in of course you have your key card over here but I think the majority of people are going to use their phone to enter and exit the vehicle and turn it on and then the door handle here you kind of have to push it and then open it up I'm sure you've used this door handle before but climbing inside it's definitely a little bit of a different interior compared to the Mustang uh, starting off with the door panel you also have soft touch materials here which feels really nice I do like this white leather it kind of just has this contrast look to it and looks really good I've always been impressed with the interior uh, white leather or I should say vegan leather of the Tesla you do have your soft touch materials over here you got your window switches as well and then this is kind of an emergency opening in case the power dies this is the electronic button to actually open the door handle so you push this and it electronically opens the vehicle door and then this is all hard touch plastic which is to be expected you do have a little cup holder over here and a storage compartment and then in terms of speaker setup it doesn't look as good but the speaker setup here is actually better than that in the Mustang this is a 14 speaker audio system and one subwoofer so I don't know where they fit them all but there's a lot of speakers in here taking a look at these seats I love the white vegan leather they look really good and I got to say with Tesla vegan leather it lasts pretty well over time as you can see there's not too much wrinkling here not too much blue dye that's kind of a big fear that I would have with blue jeans but uh, really nice looking seat maybe not as much contrast or textures to it as you find in the Mach-E but very cushy looking and very nice looking as well now climbing inside this vehicle we're gonna close the door and talk about this interior the door sounds a little bit more tinny when you open it and close it it kind of shakes a little bit but that's because this is a frameless window versus in the Mustang it is framed and then to turn this vehicle on I actually just have to put the key card right over here and it turns the vehicle on and then you can move the steering wheel now talking about the steering wheel a little bit more plain there's not as much going on here but it is leather wrap no contrast stitching or anything like that on the left hand side is a roller knob for a variety of different controls so you can use it to uh, adjust the volume as you can tell or you can use it to adjust the tilt and telescopic steering wheel there's no manual adjustment like in the Mustang which is nice and then on the right hand side another set of roller buttons again for your cruise control or adjustments so it's nice that you kind of have two set of buttons that serve a variety of different functions that's typical test like kind of the minimalist design on the left hand side is your windshield wiper stock on the right hand side is your gear selector and also that's how you're going to activate your cruise control one nuance I do want to point out is you can tell this is the performance model because it has metal covers on the brake and the gas pedals now behind the steering wheel I do want to point out this white plastic over here it extends all the way to the passenger side uh, you can get this as wood as well there's different trim pieces that you can get on the inside but it is kind of an interesting design choice and with the white contrast leather and the door panel and that panel it kind of just makes the interior a little bit more interesting I do like that piece and then this is all soft touch material so this is actually better than that in the Mustang it's injection molded plastic and then let's talk about the elephant in the room here which is this large 15 inch display now unfortunately you can't get Apple CarPlay or Android Auto but the software here is 
one of the best in the industry. I mean, there's so much functionality baked in here. Everything is controlled with this large touchscreen display. Yes, you don't have a gauge cluster, but everything is pretty much located here. So if I go uh, to my home menu, it pulls up this dual screen display. When I put it into drive, it will show me what vehicles are around me. Now, one thing to point out is there is no 360 degree camera. Now, when I turn the blinker on, it will actually give me a view of the left or the right hand side. And it's a pretty detailed camera because you actually have cameras in the B pillar, but there's no 360 camera here. It looks like I'm actually crashed into the Mustang. That's kind of funny. Um, but then when you put it into reverse, uh, you do have kind of this rear view where you could see the sides. You really just don't have a front facing camera. And that's probably the reason why there's no 360, but it does give you kind of this animated view of what's going on around you. So when you're pulling into a parking spot, there'll be a bunch of different cars around you. So it's kind of like a 360 camera, but not exactly. But nonetheless, I mean, the software here is fantastic. Uh, you can adjust your climate control with this one large vent that extends all the way from the passenger to driver's side. You can actually move it where you want to. And I gotta say, I think this screen is a little bit more responsive than that in the Mustang. Uh, also, you got rear heated seats here which is not something you had in the GT. You also have a heated steering wheel here and heated front seats. No ventilated seats on the Model Y either. So that's very similar to the Mustang Mach-E. Moving below this large screen, you do have a wireless charging pad here. There's actually two over here, so you can charge two devices. And then a little compartment over here that you can open up. Opens up some uh, different storage cubbies, and then you can actually open it up even further. So lots of storage space over here. And then two cup holders. Moving further back, you do have this vegan leather wrapped arm rest some contrast stitching here which is nice and then opening this up little cubby which again has this removable compartment to give you a little bit more space in there and then up above you again more simplistic design just a rear view mirror and then your lighting controls are up here and then take a look at that large roof i think this one might be a little bit larger than that in the mustang mach e but nonetheless it's always nice to have a large panoramic sunroof now jumping into the second row of the model y very similar to the first row starting off with the door panel soft touch materials here again more of that white leather soft touch material where you're resting your elbow electronic door release and then down here a little storage compartment and then your speaker grill now take a look at these seats again white contrast seating looks really good and then climbing inside uh tesla says there's a little bit more legroom back here you're looking at 40 and a half inches again don't mind this space over here because this seat is pretty far back because it's in its parked mode uh you do have two rear air vents back here two usb ports i will point out there's a pretty large amount of space back here it's kind of hard to tell on camera so you can actually probably more comfortably sit three people back here because their feet can actually go inside of this little compartment over here rather than on the driver and the passenger side like in most vehicles now in terms of headroom there's a little bit more space space here because it doesn't have that sloping roof line and overall it's a little bit more of an airier feel inside of the second row just because you don't have this kind of like coupe like design to it uh, for better or for worse uh, i do also like the white color kind of makes it more light and airy uh, another thing to point out though is your seating position you feel a little bit more upright versus in the mustang mach e you feel like you're reclining a little bit more so it's just a little bit of a different style in terms of seating position but this is also adjustable so you can actually tilt it back a little bit but even still it doesn't seem like there's as much kind of thigh support where you're sitting in these seats as compared to the mustang but you do also have a center arm console here with two cup holders as well and the other advantage to the model y versus the mustang is you can get the model y optioned with a third row of seats so you can get seating for up to seven individuals now I'm not quite sure how comfortable it really is going to be to sit back there. It's really probably for little kids, but it is an optional feature if you need it. It's nice to have. However, that is not an option on the performance model. It's only on the lower trim level. So if you want the performance, you can't get that third row. Hey everyone, I want to tell you about Octane Coffee Company. It is the car themed coffee company with a variety of different roasts paired with iconic names. You've got Big Block, Race Gas, The Goat, it's perfect for early morning cars and coffee or cruises down the canyon. It is the coffee for all car enthusiasts. Pick up your bag at octanecoffeecompany.com, link is down below, and get 10% off your first order using promo code OCTANE10. Now back to the video. All right, next up, let's talk about the storage capabilities of both of these vehicles. So starting off with the Mustang, let's talk about the frunk. 
you actually have to pull this like a hood latch twice. And then you can open up the frunk. Now Ford says there's 4.7 cubic feet of space. And then you also have a drain plug. So you can fill this up with ice for like a tailgate party and then you can drain it out at the end of the day. There's also two cup holders over here as well. You also have this emergency trunk release. You got this lighting over here. And then you've got your windshield wiper fill up over there. Now this is a nice amount of space considering the fact that a lot of new electric vehicles don't come with a frunk. So I'm glad that Ford included that here because it's nice to have have a little bit of extra space. One complaint I do have is the fact that you can't actually open up this latch with any button over here in the front of the vehicle. You actually have to go inside and pull on that hood latch to open it up. I believe you can also use the app, but you can't actually open it from the front of the vehicle. Now jumping into the trunk, this has a lot of stuff in here, but you do have this tonneau cover that will cover up your cargo when everything's back here. But the space back here is about 29.7 cubic feet. You also have a cigarette style power outlet back here and a bunch of different hooks and some Ford lighting. Now if you fold down the second row seat, you can get upwards of 59.7 cubic feet of space behind the second row. And in total, including the front trunk, you got 64.4 cubic feet of space inside of the Ford Mustang Mach-E. Now jumping into the Tesla, you can either use the app on your phone or you can tap on the frunk and it will automatically open. Now, jumping inside of the front of the Tesla, you've got about 4.1 cubic feet of space over here. So it's a little bit smaller than that in the Mach-E GT, but it's a little bit more spacious over here because there's no uh, several lips or anything like that. You also don't have any cup holders and no drain plug, but it is a nice amount of space. Now, opening up the trunk of the Model Y, you've got about 30.2 cubic feet of space back here. So it's a little bit larger than in the Mustang. And that's part of the reason why you can fit a third row back here. Uh, it just looks a little bit more airy, a little bit larger. And then folding down those second row seats, you can get upwards of 72 cubic feet of space behind the first row. So in total, this has quite a bit more space than that in the Mustang. We're talking 76 cubic feet of space. So if you need a little bit more cargo volume, the Tesla Model Y is one of the largest in terms of interior storage capacity of any compact EV on the market. Next category, let's talk powertrain or horsepower in general. Starting off with the Mustang, you got about 480 horsepower and 600 pound-feet of torque. Now, if you choose the GT Performance Edition, that's actually a package that you can buy on top of the standard GT. That will bump up your torque to 634. It also improves your zero to 60. So the standard GT does zero to 60 in about 3.8 seconds versus the GT Performance Edition because of the additional torque, you're looking at three and a half seconds. There is one complaint I have or one caveat to that. Ford does limit the power delivery after five consecutive seconds. So if you're hammering on the accelerator for longer than five seconds, after that time period, it will cut power. And I don't really know why they do that. I mean, they explain it as uh, preserving the motors and reducing the heat, but there are other EVs out there that don't need to cut power and they work perfectly fine. So it's a complaint I have considering the fact that this is the GT model, you would think that they would not limit power on that. So that is one complaint I have and something to keep in mind on the Ford Mustang Mach-E. Now for the Tesla Model Y performance, let's talk horsepower and torque. Now, Tesla doesn't actually release those numbers, but Motor Trend reported that the Model Y performance has 456 horsepower and 497 pound-feet of torque. So quite a bit less torque than the Mach-E, but surprisingly, zero to 60 is actually about the same as the GT Performance Edition. We're talking zero to 60 in three and a half seconds. And next up, in regards to the powertrain, let's talk about the range and the battery size. So the Mustang Mach-E GT comes with a 91 kilowatt battery that produces about 270 miles of range. Now, if you choose the GT Performance Edition, the one with the higher torque, that one's going to drop your range down to about 260 miles. But every single Mach-E GT comes with this dual motor setup, so you do have all-wheel drive right out of the gate. Now, the Tesla Model Y, which has kind of this cool-looking charge flap, only comes with an 81 kilowatt battery in this Model Y Performance Edition. So it's actually a little bit smaller than that in the Mach-E, but surprisingly range is a little bit better. We're talking 285 miles of range. Now in real world testing, it's probably gonna be very similar to the Mach-E because Tesla does tend to sometimes overrate their range standards, but it is nice that it's a smaller battery, means it's a little bit lighter weight, a little bit more efficient. This also comes with the standard dual motor setup. So you've got one in the back, one in the front, meaning this does have all-wheel drive. Now in terms of towing, 
Ford doesn't recommend towing anything in the Mach-E GT. Whereas with the Tesla, on the other hand, if you choose the $1,000 tow hitch receiver option, you can actually tow upwards of 3,500 pounds. So that is a big advantage to the Tesla Model Y. All right, we're going back to the charge port because we're gonna be talking about charging here. Uh, this is where it gets a little bit interesting between the two. So the Mustang Mach-E will take about 10.9, let's say 11 hours to charge on a level two charger at home. That's a 240 volt that you just plug in overnight. Now, if you're taking this on a road trip, you can stop at any of the different charging stations, Electrify America, ChargePoint, EVgo, you name it. There's actually a large list of them. And you can plug this into a level three fast charger and go from 10 to 80% in just about 45 minutes. Now, starting in the spring of 2024, Ford says you'll be able to tap into the Tesla supercharger network, which just increases the availability and the reliability of chargers because Tesla supercharger network is generally more reliable than all of the other competitors out there. The other nice thing about the Mustang is on the infotainment screen, you actually have a route planner. So if you're taking this on a road trip, let's say from you know somewhere like LA to Las Vegas, it will plan out where you should stop, how often you should stop, and that way you have a little bit less range anxiety because you know you'll get to your destination. Now Ford does say that if you run out of juice on the road for whatever reason, they do offer roadside assistance, which is included in the purchase of the vehicle. And what they'll do is they'll bring a tow truck out, load this vehicle on a tow truck, and either drive it to your home or your local charging station so you can fill it back up. Now for the Tesla, on the other hand, because this vehicle has a smaller battery, it actually works a little bit quicker to get from zero to 100%. When you're using a level two fast charger at home, specifically the Tesla wall connector, this thing can do about 44 miles per hour in terms of range. And what that equates to in regards to 285 mile range battery, you're looking about six and a half to seven hours to get this from zero to 100%. Now, if you use the 250 kilowatt fast charger or the supercharger from Tesla network, this thing can give you about 160 60 miles, which is somewhere around 10 to 80% in about 15 minutes. So it's quite a bit quicker charging this on a road trip than it is this because this only takes about 15 minutes. Now, realistically speaking, it really depends on the charger that you're at, the air temperature, how preconditioned the battery is. So there's a lot of variables here, but generally this is gonna be a pretty quick network. And because of that, I'm excited for other manufacturers like Ford, like Rivian to be able to tap into the supercharger network because their fast chargers are just incredibly quick. Now I should also mention Tesla also has a route planner on the infotainment screen. It may arguably be a little bit better because it only uses the Tesla supercharger network, but on a road trip, you can plan out exactly how often you need to stop, when you need to stop, and also how fast you should be going to get to your destination the quickest with the fewest amount of stops. Next up, let's talk safety. Starting off with the Mustang Mach-E GT, it was an IIHS top safety pick a couple years ago, so it's a generally safe vehicle overall. You also have a three-year, 36,000-mile basic warranty and an eight-year, 100,000-mile mile battery warranty. Now in terms of safety features here, the Mach-E GT comes standard with forward and rear parking sensors. You also have blind spot monitoring, auto high beams, rain sensing wipers, lane keep assist, adaptive cruise control, and even more safety features baked in on all trim levels. You can also option for something called Blue Cruise. Now Blue Cruise is a hands-free driving system from Ford. It actually includes a sensor that will watch your eyes as you're driving down the road and on certain pre-mapped highways, which there are quite a few thousand of them now in the United States. You can actually go onto Ford's website and see what highways are pre-mapped for Blue Cruise. But on those highways, you can actually take your hands off of the steering wheel, have a conversation with somebody, and as long as you're still paying attention to the road, the vehicle will essentially drive itself on the freeway. It's a very advanced system, and they're still testing it, and they're still releasing new features every so often with new updates. But you can purchase that with your purchase of a Mustang Mach-E GT, and that way you pretty much have hands-free driving on the freeway. Personally, I would recommend getting Blue Cruise because the cost is only about $2,100 for three years of service. And if you're driving this vehicle a lot on the freeway to and from work, it's a nice feature to have as long as that freeway that you're driving on is pre-mapped by Ford. Okay, now jumping to the Tesla's safety features. This was an IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus. So this is actually a little bit safer than that in the Mustang. In terms of 
of warranty, it's also a little bit better. We're talking four year, 50,000 mile limited bumper to bumper warranty and an eight year, 120,000 mile battery warranty. Now the Model Y is a little interesting in terms of its safety tech. Every single Model Y comes with autopilot and that is adaptive cruise control and auto steering on the highway. So it will kind of nudge you back into the lane. Now you also have front and rear parking sensors as well. You got a bunch of cameras located throughout the vehicle, including ones over here and in the B pillar. And then this doesn't have necessarily blind spot monitoring, but that center screen does show what's going on around you. And then you've got those side view mirror cameras. So I'll call that a wash between the Mustang Mach-E. But there's also a few other features we wanna talk about, and that is enhanced autopilot and full self-driving. Now, when your vehicle is equipped with enhanced autopilot, which is, by the way, a $6,000 option, that feature includes auto lane changes on the freeway. So if you're driving down the highway, you're setting your cruise control to 70 miles per hour, but the vehicle in front of you is going 50, this vehicle will automatically turn on the blinker, change lanes, and get in front of that car. The other advantage of enhanced autopilot is this will actually guide you on and off of freeway on ramps. Enhanced autopilot also includes the summon feature which is if you're in a parking lot or in a tight spot you can actually have the car pull out or come find you in a busy parking lot without you actually sitting inside the vehicle it's kind of trippy now there's also something called full self-driving and that is a twelve thousand dollar option but that really opens the gate to almost semi-autonomous driving inside the Model Y. With that feature, this vehicle will actually recognize stoplights and stop signs, and it will essentially navigate in city traffic, braking and accelerating, and it will also auto steer on the city streets as well. So you can plug in a destination, and essentially the car will take you from point A to point B. I have a couple friends who have used this feature, and they say it's kind of crazy. I mean, this car really does a lot of the work. Now, that being said, it's not an entire victory over Blue Cruise because you still have to generally keep your hands on the steering wheel or at least touch the steering wheel every so often. Whereas with Blue Cruise, it's hands-free driving. So that's the caveat or the distinction between the two. This thing is more capable because you can use it on and off the freeway versus Blue Cruise, but you still have to be somewhat attentive and constantly touch the steering wheel or at least let it know that you're paying attention to the road, which is probably a good thing. Now, the advantage with getting the full self-driving for $12,000 is eventually, I'm sure there will be a time where the government regulation allows Tesla to push out this software with having no hands on the steering wheel. And so by purchasing this feature, you open the door for future updates where eventually your car could be full self-driving without any hands-on intervention into the vehicle. So that is something that you're not gonna have to consistently pay for because you bought it out of the gate. All right, next up, let's talk about the pricing of these two vehicles and how they compare. So starting off with the Mustang, the base price of the GT is $59,995 before a destination. If you choose that GT Performance Edition trim level that I talked about, that's about a $5,000 option on top of the base price. So if you're looking at getting a pretty well-equipped Mustang Mach-E GT, you're looking in the high 60s, low 70s after destination costs. This vehicle does qualify for the $7,500 tax credit, so you could take off a little bit off the top and get this closer to about $60,000, assuming you qualify. Now, the Model Y, on the other hand, is a little bit more affordable when you don't get some of that full self-driving capability. So the base price of the Model Y, as of filming this video, is $52,490. Of course, if you get enhanced autopilot, that that's six thousand dollars and then on top of that's another six thousand if you get full self-driving so after destination this is also about the high sixty thousand dollar range at around 67k so very comparable between the two almost identical in price now that price also excludes the seventy five hundred dollar tax credit if you qualify so with that you're looking around sixty thousand dollars for a brand new model y performance which is really a great bargain considering all the features you get if you choose not to get some of those additional safety features you can get a model y performance for about 53k which is an absolute steal given the performance. All right, for the next thing I wanna discuss, I wanna get behind the wheel and get on the road and see how these two compare in terms of driving dynamics. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put it in unbridled mode, which is kind of the performance mode. And I'm also gonna turn on the propulsion sound option so it can pump in a little bit of sound makes it feel a little bit more exhilarating for me, but you can shut that off as well. There's also one pedal driving, but right now I have it pretty much on no regen. But we're here right now, we're gonna gun it and see how this thing feels. Whoa, uh, it feels quick. I mean, it, it feels like uh, a roller coaster. You kind of get this tunnel vision where you're like uh, like a spaceship going off uh, into space. I mean, it's, it's, it's really crazy how quick this vehicle is. There did seem to be a little bit of a delay when I gunned it, but once it got up and going, uh, this thing feels very, very powerful. Let's do a little bit of a pull here. Yeah, this thing is very quick. 
very, very quick to get, you know, up and going. And then in terms of road noise, it's actually a pretty quiet cabin in here. Even with that propulsion sound, it's not overwhelming or anything like that. This thing seems, you know, pretty composed on the road. Now, I want to find a rough spot where we can, you know, go over some bumps and see how this thing feels to see how the suspension really soaks things up. So here we are on a somewhat rough patch. We're going over some bumps here. And I gotta say, it feels pretty composed, pretty smooth on the road. It surprises me because this feels more on the luxury side than I expected from just a Ford Mustang Mach-E. But going over some potholes, you know, I don't hear any creaks, of course, which is to be expected, but it also soaks up the bumps pretty well considering we're sitting on 20 inch wheels. Uh, this is a perfectly fine car for like road tripping and being comfortable inside the cabin. There's really nothing here that's like, you know, jarring or anything like that. I also switched on the one pedal driving and it uh, works pretty well. If you've driven an electric vehicle before, uh, there's a pretty good amount of regen. Now there's only really one option here. It's either regen on or regen off, but you can easily one pedal drive this thing. It's not the most aggressive regen. It's not like a Rivian or anything like that, but uh, it's, it's pretty good overall. All right, now we're inside of the Tesla Model Y Performance. My first time actually driving one and let's see how this feels on the road. So currently my acceleration is in sport mode. I'm gonna put the steering in sport as well, uh, although we're just gonna do a straight line acceleration and see how this thing feels compared to the other one. All right, three, two, one. Wow, it is a lot like a roller coaster. Um, first initial reaction, impressions I should say, compared to the Mustang Mach-E, very hard for me to tell the difference. Both are incredibly quick. Um, it's uh, It would take really putting them side by side to see the difference between them. This one also seemed to have a little bit of a delay and then it built up. Um, I feel like maybe the Rivian R1S and R1T is a little bit quicker, but uh, man, this thing is still super quick. Let's do another little pull here. Yeah, I mean, the speedometer just keeps going up and uh, this thing is very quick, very torquey. It doesn't feel like this has any less torque than that in the Mach-E. It does seem like it's a little bit louder in here than the Mach-E. You also have a little bit of an echo. Uh, and I think that's just because this has a lot more glass. I mean, the roof is bigger. The greenhouse here is bigger. You have more glass on the sides. And so I think that probably adds the echo and it also adds the fact that it's a little bit louder in here, especially given the fact this has frameless windows. You know, those aren't as insulated. It's not loud by any means. It's not my Ford Bronco soft top, but it is a little bit louder inside than the Mach-E, which, you know, it just takes getting used to. Now, going over the exact same road I drove in the Mustang, I wanna see how this thing soaks up bumps in comparison to that. I've sat in the Model Y before and it's similar, but I do think the Mach-E is a little bit softer on the roads. And maybe that has to do with the fact that it is also quieter in the Mach-E, but this thing um, doesn't feel as soft, especially going over that exact same pothole in the Mach-E, it was a little bit softer, less jarring. Uh, it kind of soaks up bumps a little bit better. And I've noticed this in other Model Ys. I've sat in them for like Uber vehicles. Yeah, see, so just going over that, you kind of hear stuff jostling a little bit inside. Um, you know, I've sat in these cars in like Ubers and Lyfts, and I've noticed that from the very beginning was that they're not the softest vehicle when you're going over bumps. I feel like you know, they could be a little bit better in that regard. But overall, you know, very quick vehicle, great bang for your buck. I mean, this is one of the best value vehicles you can buy. To get performance like this under 55 grand is just impressive. Of course, they're gonna have to cut costs somewhere. Suspension's a little bit rougher. Uh, the sound inside the vehicle is a little bit louder, but uh, you can't have your cake and eat it too and also save money in the process. But yeah, it's definitely noticeable this thing is rougher on the roads than the Mach-E GT. Well, there you have it, folks. That finishes off today's video. So to sum it up, which one of these two would I recommend for you? Well, it really depends on your personal opinion because both of these have some pretty good advantages and also some disadvantages. Starting off with the Tesla, this thing can be had for a more affordable price. Now, 
price changes over time with Tesla. So for right now, it's more affordable, but tomorrow it could be something else. But it is generally a really great bang for your buck. I mean, the value of everything you get for this vehicle is incredible. Software is great, more cargo volume. And then if you do equip this with a full self-driving, you got some really great semi-autonomous driving features. Now jumping to the Mustang, it's overall a little bit more luxurious than the Tesla. It is more expensive, but when you start adding the Tesla up with the full self-driving, they are pretty equal. I also personally like the look of the Mustang a little bit more. To me, it does look a little bit more muscular, more aggressive. I mean, it kind of looks like a Mustang. You got these cool body lines, and then especially in a color like this, like the yellow or the red, the blue, they pop a little bit. And so because of that, I find myself turning my head to look at this vehicle when it drives down the road. There's also just not very many of them. So if it comes down to my personal opinion, I'd pick the Mach-E GT just because it's a little bit more unique, but both of these are incredible values. I mean, you can get almost near 300 miles of range, zero to 60 in three and a half seconds, and you've got some really great safety features baked in. Honestly, these are some of the two best EV compact crossovers on the market today. So you really can't go wrong with either one of them. But let me know your thoughts between the two. Would you take the Tesla Model Y Performance or the Mach-E GT? And let me know why down in the comments below. If you guys enjoyed this video, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for all of the weekly car videos. Also check me out on all the social media at Shwayze underscore. And until next time, everybody, I hope you stay Shwayze, stay healthy, have a wonderful day.